Hey everyone, in today's video I am starting a new series where we're going to be comparing prime focal lengths at portrait photo shoots. So to start it off, I thought we'd start at the wide end. So today we're going to be comparing the 24mm to the 35mm for portrait photography. And I'm using both these lenses on the Sony a7 IV. You like the bins? Yeah, I mean, what am I going to do? <laughs> It's always been night when we're filming videos. <laughs> For my 24 millimeter, I'm using the GM 24 millimeter f1.4 and I'm gonna take a photo of Barry just standing in the same spot with both lenses. So here we have the 24 photo. And for my 35, I'm using the GM 35 millimeter f1.4. Again, without either of us moving, I'll get the same photo. Both a 24 and a 35 millimeter are wide focal lengths. And as you can see in this comparison, the 24 has a wider field of view than the 35. I'm also going to take the same mid-length photo with both lenses too, so I'll frame them to look the same. I have this nice spot here with that nice tree in the background, which I like. And for the 35, I have to stand a little further away to get the same framing. I also want to mention you don't need to be using the exact same lenses as I am to see these results. Any 24 or 35 millimeter on a full frame camera will produce the same field of view, even on a zoom lens. I want to get like the house and the ivy kind of at the same time. Oh, that's so cool there. In this first comparison is where I think both these wide focal lengths shine when it comes to taking portraits and that's creating an environmental portrait. These kinds of images are when there is an even emphasis on the background and the subject in the frame. And it's one of the main reasons I love using wide angle lenses for my portrait photography. While I am framing both focal lengths to look as similar as possible, you can still see a lot of differences in the final images. I'm gonna switch over to the 35 and we'll get just similar shots again as well. I have to stand back a little bit with the 35 just to be able to get very similar framing to the 24. Keep an eye on the left-hand side of the 24 millimeter photo where you can see more of the background. On the other hand, we have the 35 millimeter image where you can still see a fair amount of the background, but not quite as much as the 24. Since the 35 is less wide than the 24, it compresses the field of view more, and thus we see less of the location in our shot. In my opinion, I find the 24 millimeter is great for showing off more of the environment in your photos to create story-based images. The 35 is also great for showing off the background, but it keeps the subject as the more prominent part of the photo. Oh, look at that pink house, it's so cute. Next, we're gonna take a mid-length portrait, and I love this location for the vibrant greens, of course, but then also the hint of pink you can see in the background from the house and the harsh lines of the fence. The outfit Barry is wearing also matches up to the white flowers you can see in the tree. In this location, you can see both lenses are really flattering for this style of portrait photography. I find that both these focal lengths are great options for weddings, events, travel, landscape, and street photography. It really depends on your personal preferences and how much drama and context you want in each of your frames. In the 24 millimeter shot, I love how Barry is prominent in the frame, but you can also really see the hint of pink from the house in the background. For me personally, I tend to reach for the 24 focal length when it comes to doing video, landscape photography, and when I want really dramatic portrait images that include a lot of the location. In the 35 millimeter photos, it's still a great shot where you can see most of the elements, but because it's not quite wide enough, it is missing the pink from the house, which I think was a special touch in the 24 photo. I reach for a 35 millimeter the most when it comes to wedding photography, as I like my images to be more intimate with a balance between the couple being prominent in the frame while still seeing a lot of the location. And I also use a 35 a lot to create lifestyle images while traveling and landscape shots. I wanted to go just into the sun over there as well. Oh, the sun is so nice there. Whoa, that's so pretty. I'm gonna get like a little bit of a... Where should I? Let me take a little step that way. One of the downsides to keep in mind when using wide angle lenses for portrait photography is that you have to physically get pretty close up to a person to capture these shots of them. 
While this might be fine for fashion photography or portraits where your subject is comfortable in front of the camera, when your subject has never posed for a lens before or feels a little uncomfortable getting their photo taken, having a lens really close up to their face doesn't really help the situation. This is about as close up as I personally like to get to a person with a 24mm focal length to avoid distortion, which I'll have an example of later on. In these 24 shots, I love that you can see so much of the background, even though I'm really close up to Barry, so you get a lot of context to your portraits. I ended up loving the 24mm focal length for this location so much that I ended up taking a few extra photos here with a different composition. Moving on to our next location, I'm gonna start off with a full body shot as both these focal lengths are great for that. Unlike getting close up portraits where being close to the subject is a downside, I love that you don't have to get too far away from your subject to get a full body portrait. This means you can continue talking to your subject and giving them direction without having to yell. You can also utilize tighter locations where you might not have room to take full body shots with something longer like an 85mm lens for example. In this particular location, you can see the downside of a 24mm focal length can be that sometimes it shows too much of the location. It can look distracting when there are too many elements in the frame. For example, I don't like the footpath here or the tree trunk. On the other hand, with the 35mm shot, I absolutely love the background to foreground separation. The model stands out just enough, but you can still easily make out what the background looks like even at a wide open aperture of f1.4. Finally, let's test out a super close up portrait on both these lenses. You can see just how close up I need to be to pull this off with a 24mm lens. Luckily Barry is super comfortable in front of the camera, but you can imagine how this would make someone feel who's not. On the 24, it's starting to distort her facial features because I'm getting too close physically to be able to frame the shot the way I want. You can see her face is getting pulled and this portrait of her doesn't look like what she looks like in real life. With the 35mm, there is still some distortion, but I find this focal length is more versatile than a 24. For my preference, the 35 has just enough distortion for my liking when getting close-up portraits, so it's an easy focal length to use when you want to capture a variety of shots of a person, from full body framing to tighter headshot framing. So that is all I have for today's comparison between the 24 and 35 millimeter prime lens. Let me know which one is your favorite one down in the comments below and why you like one over the other. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.